Welcome to the channel. If you happen to be new, thanks for checking us out. For everybody that came over from MD Fish Tanks, thank you. If you haven't seen the last video, I showed you this epic 100 gallon aquascape. that I did with MD fish tanks and stocked to this thing with a couple of hundred fish. This is an epic setup and I absolutely love it. So once again, thank you to MD fish tanks for coming all the way from the UK and helping me scape this tank. What an epic experience. So thank you very much. But today it's actually not gonna be about fresh water at all. It's actually gonna be about salt water. And the great thing about today is it's going to be a build on a budget. If you happen to have been around the channel for a while, you know that I like to put things in plastic bins. I don't think that you always have to spend thousands of dollars on aquariums and things like that to be able to actually learn about the hobby. And today, I wanna to learn about saltwater fish keeping with you on a budget. A full on saltwater setup with everything we need to raise some sort of saltwater fish for as cheap as we can possibly do it. So with that, let's get out of here and get some supplies. This right here is gonna become the absolute cheapest saltwater aquarium you could possibly put together. Along with it, the absolute cheapest sump filtration system that you could put together with a cheap saltwater aquarium as well. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. So we're gonna start with our sump filtration. What's gonna happen is this is gonna be our water column. There will be a pump that pumps water up into this section here, which will be full of live rock, and then it'll spill over into the water column here, giving it oxygenation as well as filtration, biological and mechanical. To start, we wanna go ahead and perforate this in some way so the water can actually spill over into the bottom here. So what I'm gonna to use to do that, this handy little plunge cutter. And this plunge cutter is from Walmart. They're like 20 bucks and I use these to cut plastic. Like I'll cut the tops out of plastic bins and change that out for chicken wire as an example on hamster enclosures. But these things work great for cutting plastic. So we're gonna go ahead and just start by getting us a lip here to allow the water to fill up and spill over and not spill out of the tub. So now we have a nice little lip. We'll clean this up here in just a minute. We wanna go ahead and add some notches because what that'll do is help aerate the water as it flows over. Keep this stable inside of this tub. What I wanna do is attach it. So what we'll do is line this up and then just drill holes right through the top edge of this in about three places, making sure that we don't actually put a hole into the tub itself. Now that we have the holes, zip tie this down. And just like that, this thing is secure and we are now able to get this thing going. So with that guys, let's go ahead and get this thing where it's gonna go and start the next step of this process. Well, now that we have this set where we're going to actually put this thing, let's go ahead and get a couple elements in here. Let's start with our live rock, which is going to be our filtration system inside of this setup. So this live rock actually has beneficial bacteria in it, which will help with cycling this system immediately. And then we're also going to be using some live sand. And with our sand, we're gonna give it a semi aquascape. It's nothing crazy, but. So once we have fish in here, that way there is somewhere for them to hide if they would like to hide. Okay, with that guys, now we just need to go ahead and get some water in here to start. So let's get some salt water and get this thing filled up. Now to dechlorinate, we're gonna be using some of our favorite, which is API's Aqua Essential, and this is safe for both salt water and fresh water. And even though we have live sand and live rock, we're gonna go ahead and dose this with the liquid bacteria. Another great product from API is the API Quick Start. This is actually good for both saltwater and freshwater aquariums. Directions are on the back for saltwater, but it's basically you double the dose in order to treat this with some live nitrifying bacteria. 
So now that we have this set up, we want to go ahead and add our pump system. Now for a pump, we're using a very little simplistic pump, which will actually pump 100 gallons per hour, which is perfect for this size setup. Well, let's go ahead and test the salinity. So we're at about 1.01. .01. We want to be at about 1.024. So we're going to go ahead and add some salt. Not 1.024 in both the sump as well as the water column. So we are good to go from a salinity perspective. This water is super cloudy and it's gonna take some time to actually clear up. But while we wait for this to clear up, let's get out and get some fish. Let's go ahead and acclimate our fish. Two hours later. All right, well, it has been a little while since this thing has been set up and we're coming back to check just to see how everything's going. The water is still not completely clear, but it's a lot clearer than it was. And in fact, you can see up underneath this little cave structure, we have one species of fish that's swimming around. Now this will get a lot clearer as we move on. But I built this cave structure specifically so these fish had hiding places because they are kind of territorial. So what we have in here, and we're gonna take a look at these in just a minute, we have these little domino dam fish, which are super easy beginner fish. They like to get up in the rocks and hide. They're algae eaters, completely omnivores, so they'll pretty much eat any kind of food you put in here, and apparently they're really, really good for beginner saltwater keepers. These things have survived throughout the day, so everything looks to be good. Salinity's still good on the water. One of the other things that we have is right back here in the corner we have a peppermint shrimp piece hanging out down there and then we have a couple of little blue legged hermit crabs and they're making their way around this aquarium as well and then we have a nasaria snail and then a i cannot remember the type of snail it is i want to say troga snail maybe i don't remember it's a smaller version of the mexican turbo snail and we have one of those in here as well taking care of any of the algae and stuff i have the pump turned down significantly low so we don't have a lot of water flow in here right now but as you can see the filtration system is super simple we have our live rock up here in this overhead sump filtration system it gets pumped from the pump that's back in the corner up through this tube and down into this sump where it then overflows here across this and what that allows is is maximum oxygenation of the water for these fish everything in here is looking good but let's go ahead and take a look underwater at some of these fish It has been a few days and this thing has significantly cleared up and look at the little damsel fish in there and we also have one of our little blue legged hermit crabs here just chilling out sifting through the sand but we're gonna go ahead and feed these guys for the very first time and what we're gonna be feeding them is just some frozen mysis shrimp. And this can actually be fed to both freshwater and saltwater, just as an initial food source for them to see if we can get them to eat. So let's take a look at this and see what happens.
thing is for sure, this 100 gallon tank is looking amazing. The water level's a little low because of evaporation, but overall this thing looks fantastic. And the deal is, is that if we're gonna give these saltwater fish a treat with mysa shrimp, we gotta do that for these guys too, because angels and neons love mysa shrimp. Somebody asked in the comments, do I have all six angel fish? We started with five, we didn't start with six, and we have all five. Here's one, two, three, four, and number five is right back there. Let's go ahead and give these guys a little treat as well. This tank looks amazing, guys absolutely amazing. Hopefully you went on to enjoy this video on setting up the world's cheapest saltwater aquarium and the fact that you can do that for like under $50. Damselfish, blue-legged hermit crabs, a peppermint shrimp, everything to learn how to do saltwater properly. And we're gonna learn over time on how to do this because coming up soon, at the very end of this video, I'm gonna show you something. It's just gonna flash for a second, so stay tuned. But very soon, we're gonna be doing something with salt water that's gonna require a lot, a lot of salt. But with that guys, thank you so very much for tuning in and watching this video today. Thank you for subscribing and following us on Facebook and Instagram. Links to both are down below. And with that, hey, we will see you next time.